All right, Professor Cooper here. Um, we're going to talk today a little bit about polar coordinates. Polar coordinates uh, allow us to make things like pie charts, um, what are called coxcomb or rose plots or polar area charts, and some other uh, related plots, but those are really the primary uh, plots that we'll be talking about. You can actually do some things with line plots where you sort of conform them to a circle as well using the um, area circle and polar coordinates. Uh, ultimately, polar coordinates have some perceptual issues, I'll say. So you should uh, usually proceed with caution if you're going to decide when to use them. Um, that doesn't it doesn't mean it's always a bad idea, but I would say more often than not, there's probably a clearer way to do it. Uh, pie charts, for example, uh, you, you really just have perceptual issues in terms of determining which two slices are larger sometimes, especially if you have a number of slices, uh, a fairly high number of slices. Um, I mean, imagine staring, sitting in front of a pizza box and saying, which of these two sort of similarly sliced pieces of pizza are the same, are, are the ones that I want? Which one do I want? Which one do I want to give my friend? Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that you're talking about here. And when the two slices are of similar size, it becomes very difficult to perceive. So, uh, and the same goes with what we're going to talk about in terms of coxcomb or rose plots. Um, so, but still, they can be useful, they can be interesting, they have historical uh, reference point in terms of Florence Nightingale and her sort of landmark rose plots on the Crimean War and um, the fatalities of the soldiers in the East. Um, and she was comparing whether or not a disease was related to wounds from battle or disease. And then the implementation of a, a sanitation uh, department um, and sort of a pre and post. And if you're in the class, then you actually get to recreate that plot this week uh, and so these are these are these have historical framework you know like these have been used for a while they're very interesting they can be very beautiful to look at they're not always uh, perceptually very helpful but um, there are cases when it's useful so I feel like I should uh, introduce them everybody wants to do a pie chart at some point if you're in business whatever um you know there are cases when it's okay but um we're gonna go through this so uh, ultimately the first concept for polar coordinates is going to be the uh, theta and this is what defines how the angle opens up in a polar coordinate okay so, and theta in this case can be attached to an X variable or a Y variable. Those are really your two choices. Um, all right, so let's make sure tidyverse is loaded. Uh, we need to know theta. <clears throat> We're gonna start with bar charts. Uh, because really what um, using a polar coordinate is about is starting with a bar chart and then sort of wrapping it into, like bending it and turning it into a circle, right? Now, if you have one stacked bar, that's what, become, that, that's what can ultimately become a pie chart, for example. Um, I should even write that here. It's not just a stacked, it's really a single stacked bar plot. Now you'll have other um, opportunities and you'll see when I play with some of the arguments what happens, okay? Uh, you'll see 
some weird versions of what happens when you start to apply the chord polar function, meaning turning this bar chart into um, polar coordinates. When I turn things, certain things on and off, you're going to get a version of a polar chart that's going to be at various times kind of weird looking and may not make a whole lot of sense, but well, we're going to talk through it. I'm going to use the empty cars data set for this because it's uh, you know ready made in R. So we're going to just start by making a bar chart. Uh, please feel free to ignore the plot. It's currently there. That is from working on an assignment. So we've got a basic bar chart here. Uh, it is. A, uh, it's just a bar chart with the account of the number of cars in the empty cars data set based on how many cars have either four or six or eight cylinders to the engine. Simple, straightforward. I wrap a factor around cylinder because in the data set it is a considered a numeric, it is of class double or numeric. And that's not really going to be helpful for breaking apart by categories. Okay, if it were a, a double or numeric, you would come out with a continuous scale and all sorts of weird stuff, and we don't need that. All right, so uh, there's a bar chart. Okay, um, let's see. We can do a slightly different form of a bar chart where we actually calculate a statistic um, as well where we say, hey, let's figure out what the mean miles per gallon is per car that has four cylinders or six cylinders or eight cylinders, right? Now, this should make sense if you know even the first thing about a car. Uh, the larger the engine and the more cylinders it has, the less fuel efficient it will be on average, which means that uh, a four-cylinder engine is a little bit of a smaller engine and it will be more fuel efficient on average. Now, this data set's pretty old, so it doesn't take into account a lot of um, new cars. It doesn't even consider electric cars as far as I know because it's pretty old. But uh, it's a toy data set for purposes like this, so it's not a big deal that this is not a representative sample of cars in the fall of 2020, which is when I'm actually um, recording this. Okay, so let's add a polar coordinate to the earlier bar chart that we made. And all I'm going to do, so this is this is really key to making anything with polar coordinates in R. You're really going to start with a bar chart. You're going to write the code like you're making a bar chart, and then you're going to add polar coordinates. Now. There's going to be some interaction with some uh, aesthetics and arguments and things that's going to determine which kind of polar chart you end up making. Do you make a rose plot or a coxcomb plot or a polar area chart, or do you make a, a pie chart instead? Or are you making a sort of polar line plot, which would wrap lines um, around in a concentric circle um, sort of style? Um, it ultimately depends on those things. So let's um, let's just start. We're going to add chord polar, and again, remember the first argument that I need is theta. All right. So uh, this is very weird looking, right? It doesn't look very intuitive. It's not helpful at all in this particular format. But you can kind of see what happened. Uh, if you go back and you look, and you see that we've got a 4 and a 6 and an 8. The 4 is the longest. The 6 is the middle. 8 is the shortest. Fast forward, and I've taken the color out of it for now. You can see that 4 is the inner, 6 is the middle, and 8 is the outer. 8 is the longest, 6 is the middle, and 4 is the shortest. They all have a starting point at 0, and you, we've basically taken the three bars and we bent them in a circular fashion. Okay, it's like we've heated them up and we bent them like they were made of metal or something. Uh, 
So you can sort of see the logic, okay, uh, the starting point and the wraparound, but this is certainly not um, not a pie chart, and it's not a coxcomb or a rose plot. Those things have a single point of origin in the center of the circle, right? And this does not. This has an origin at zero that is separate for category four cylinders, category six cylinders, and category eight cylinders. Uh, so we'll need to do something to the arguments to force uh, an, a starting point for X for all three categories at the center of the polar coordinate area circle. Okay, I'm, I'm going to skip for a moment uh, the rose plot. We'll come back to it. I'm going to do now the same um, the same code that I have up here, where I just added the chord polar with theta, but now I'm going to add this X aesthetic in the ggplot line, and I'm gonna say X equals one. And this is how we force all of these bars to start at the same point, okay? They're all going to start at the same point. Um, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and run it, and then I'm going to do something else. So there we have, now the area of the circle represents um, the proportion of the total number of cars that have eight cylinders versus six versus four. It is not labeled in a way that um, is obvious that it's proportions. It really is still counts. It's actually counting them and giving each individual car a particular slice, but that count turns into a proportion, an area of the pie, right? Which is nice. As it turns out, it's a little bit tricky to make the label um, on, but not very tricky to make the label for proportions. Um, it, you have to mutate a new variable, right? Like that's all you have to do. Um, but I'm going to do something so you can see what the x equals 1 is doing. I'm going to cut the pipe and run it again. And here's what happens. x forces, we, we have a single stacked bar chart. Remember what I said, a pie chart is a single stacked bar chart. The x equals 1 forces it to be a single stacked bar chart. Therefore, they all are starting at the same origin when we convert and conform it to polar coordinates and the theta equals y. So if you're setting up a pie chart and you're not sure you're doing it right, check the bar beforehand. Check the bar chart ahead of time. If it looks something like this, where you have a single stacked bar chart, then you're on your way to a true pie chart, and then you can just wrap into polar coordinates. You can con convert through the theta equals y in this case. Uh, so we can run it again and show the transformation. And there we have it. Okay, now let's talk about another argument that involves the rotation of the, the pie chart, and it's literally just a start argument. Now, the start argument um, comes in the form of units that are radians as opposed to degrees, and radians represent um, the amount of the angle that has to open up for the uh, for the, for the uh, circumference, the, the area of the circumference, that section of the circumference to equal uh, the amount that is the radius. So we have two pi radians available to us in terms of angles in, in that format. 
In degrees, we have 360 degrees of angles. In radians, we have 2 pi radians. So you have any choice where you want to start. This is 0. And we can start at pi over 2. We could start at pi over 3. We can do anything between 0 and 2 pi for the starting point. OK, so if 0, and it goes clockwise, so if we start at 0, and then I say, instead, let's start at pi, if 2 pi radians takes us all the way back around the circle, 1 pi uh, radian takes us down to the bottom. So 0 should show up here. The entire pi chart should rotate, and it will.